Good morning and good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may happen to be across the ships at sea. It's, uh, well, there's one you haven't heard in a while. <laughs> good morning, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. That was an old, that's an old World War II, uh, say, greeting, I think, TV show greeting or whatever it was. Uh, it is uh, almost, can you believe this? It is almost the end of the month. How insane is this? Time Hi. flies when you're having fun, right? Hey, greetings. I'm Glenn Henderson. It is the John Lavinia Success Mastermind for your Wednesday 29th of September. And we are pretty excited to be back with you. I've got something sort of interesting to discuss uh, with you today. I'll get to that in just a second. Let's have a little housekeeping first. You are here in the Gen Sesh, as I like to refer to it, your general session where we talk about a variety of topics and, and offer some thoughts and insights which we think may be, we hope, will be of some value to those of you who choose to share the time with us. And um, so hopefully this uh, topic today will be of some interest. Right after this is the hospitality suite. Come on in and hang out. And I've had some really interesting conversations there inside the hospitality suite. So um, come on by, swing by if you like. Um, then later on this afternoon, checking the schedule, 6 p.m. Eastern time. It is Life and Business Tools, hosted by pretty much the smartest man in the room, our good friend, Professor Adrian Garner. What's up, Daisy? Nice to see you. My good friend Ace is with us as always. Steadfast. There he is, my man, and Gail. Nice to see. Have you done a little something different with your hair, Gail? What's what's uh, yeah, something? I had to cut. You see, this is this is how this is Very how you know <laughs> that I am a happily married man. You see, because I notice these things. <laughs> What's up, money mama? It wouldn't be the same without our Lindsay Dollar, would it? Great to see you. I know she always keeps oh. the camera off because she's out on the road, getting her work in, getting her steps oh. in, and uh, getting it done. So nice to see you all, and, and um, you know, I like to, I always like to share what I'm up to these days and what's going on, what books I'm reading, and would you believe I have right in front of me, you ready for this? So just so you know where my, or get some inkling of where my brain might be at these days. I will have you know that I currently have right in my orbit here, and I, and I mean orbit, I mean my physical, in my briefcase carrying around, I actually have, you ready for this, four, four different books on the go at the moment. Are you ready for this? Here's the, here's the shortest one, the easiest one. It's called U Squared. You too, yes, I know. Which reminds me of a joke. You ready for a joke? This is like pre, pre fun Friday. So Bono and the Edge walk into a pub for a pint. And the barman looks up and rolls his eyes and says, Oh no, not you two again. You see what I, you see? You see what I did there? You see? Anyway, I'm going to stop telling jokes now because I'm not very funny. Anyway, You Squared, the name of this book. The subtitle, A High Velocity Formula for Multiplying Your Personal Effectiveness in Quantum Leaps. Now, there's your $5 sentence for the day. And once I get done reading it, I'll probably be able to tell you what it's about. <laughs> oh, in the back, it says here, making a quantum leap in our personal growth, personal effectiveness. Uh, Dynamic methods for leaping beyond ordinary performance, achieving dramatic breakthroughs. Um, well, here are some of the things. Does any of this sound appealing? Quit trying harder. Notice the wording. It doesn't say quit working harder. 
says, quit trying harder. Think, next one, think beyond what common sense would allow. Huh. Possibilities, right? Ooh. Here's one that normally scares the bejeebers out of most people. Make your move before you're ready. Ooh. Make your move before you're ready. And then the fourth one that's mentioned here, look inside for the opportunity. So this looks like pretty interesting stuff. I, I'm going to dig into this, and I'll let, you know, I'll let you know what I find out. Is that a deal? I'll share that with you. Uh, what else am I reading? Ooh, I think I've mentioned this one before. The Perfect Close by James Muir. It's, uh, it's about effective selling and sales closing techniques, which we all need. I don't care what profession you're in, you need to know how to sell. And I'll prove that to you later on. Here's a really interesting one that I just heard about. You know, I go on, uh, what do you call it, uh, at Amazon and different sites, and, and I just browse and see, yeah, look at the recommendations. What's recommended for you this week? This is one that was recommended for me and oh boy, is this some good stuff. I'm about two thirds of the way through the audiobook so far. It's called The Three Minute Rule by Brant Pindovich. Who's Brant Pindovich? Well, who's Brant Pindovich? You ever seen a TV show called Bar Rescue? Mm -hmm. Brant Pindovich pitched that show to the network and produced it. You've seen another show called, um, uh, what was the other one? The Great Race? Anyway, the book is about how to get your message across. No, this isn't all about an elevator pitch. He talks about elevator pitches, though. This book is about how to get your message across in three minutes in the most effective and powerful way possible. Yes. And here's one that is, I predict is going to be near and dear to my heart. You know me. You know I'm the professional connector, right? This is what I do. I connect with people. I connect people with each other. And I help people connect with their own deepest dreams and desires. And then I help them connect with the resources to make those dreams a reality. So I'm a connector. And what's the first thing you got to do? If you want to connect people, you got to talk with them, right? Have a conversation. So I am now about to start a book by quite possibly the greatest conversationalist who has ever lived. Who am I talking about? Larry King. Larry King. How to talk to anyone, anytime, anywhere. Pretty straightforward, uh, huh? Pretty self-explanatory title. So I'll run through these um, in a moment after, after we're done with our main topic of conversation here. So if you wanted to write down the titles or whatever and, and check the books out for themselves, if listen, if you read it first and want to come talk, talk to me about it, by all means. Now then, the main topic of conversation today, um, and, 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 and as you probably guess, I often um, base our topics on something that's happened with me personally, something that I'm working on that, you know, I had to learn a, a lesson the hard way. You know, I've shared a couple of those with us over, over the, these months that we've been talking, that we've been chatting. And, you know, and then I get to share my own hard knocks with somebody else. So I was having a conversation uh, with somebody, a couple of people recently, good friends of mine, and I was reminded <clears throat> of the fact that there are certain things that I should never, ever, ever say or even think. One of them um, ha has to do with my own activities, my own ventures, the my own, the areas in which I choose to focus my energies, the ventures, the stuff that I'm working on. And 
I have for some months now been sharing with certain people in certain situations that what I'm doing now, as I was saying to them, what I'm doing now, this is it. This is the last time I'm thinking about something other than what I'm doing now. This is it. This is my last venture in this direction. I have found, uh, I have found it. I have found my home, if you like. I'm straight. I don't need nothing. <sighs> yeah, well, that was bollocks. <laughs> because... I had recently been introduced to a whole other way of thinking, a whole other way of doing things, a whole other direction to take, a whole new venture to, to launch. And, and I'm think, and it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. I may share, you know, I may share some aspects of, of, of it sometime and, you know, without getting into specifics. And then as soon as I started getting excited, about the prospect of the new thing and the new activity and everything and, and you know, kind of fingers on the starting line, ready, set, go, right? I thought, now wait a minute. Didn't I just say to so-and-so a while ago that, I, no, this is it. I don't need anything new. I don't want any. So the, I, so, so, so the life lesson, which this time <laughs> in contrast to my, my, my conversations with John at different points, this time I punched myself in the face. Hey, Glenn, hey, hey, hey. Never say never. Pretty simple. So simple it almost sounds stupid, right? Never say never. And the, the, the person, the, the, the guy that, you know, I've been having the conversations with, he said exactly that to me. He said, well, Glenn, you know, maybe that ought to teach you. That never, never, it's a very dangerous thing to say, is never. I'm never doing anything else. I'm never changing anything up. I'm never considering any new ideas. The difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. Um, a, a, as I think we've heard John mention, and another buddy of mine also likes to say, possibly two of the most dangerous words that we human beings can utter are, I know. Because one, in, in a sense, when I say, I know, built into that is the implication that I don't need to learn anything new. That I've already learned everything I need to learn in life or in this time. And uh, it becomes what many people have referred to. First one I heard use this phrase just this way was Tony Robbins, who refers to such a statement as a self-limiting belief. That is, something I've been saying to myself for months or years or maybe m most of my life or my whole life which may or may not be true but which is absolutely having the effect of placing limits on my own capabilities limits on my own possibilities in life and so, see, when I, uh, somebody said something to me in another conversation, one of the people that I, that I have a coaching relationship with, I'm kind of coaching her in, in business matters, and, and she said, here's what she said. 
when re with regard to a sales or a recruiting or a, 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 a an enrolling kind of business model, which could be just about anything, here's what she said. She said, well, you know, I don't do this that way a certain way because after all, no one likes to be told no. And I, I had to call time out because, and you'll see why I'm getting up in a minute. She said, after all, no one likes to be told no. And I had to call a friendly time out on her because I have read go for no. Have you read go for no? Richard Fenton and Andrea Waltz. Somebody want to do me the big favor, go look it up in uh, Amazon and drop the link into the chat while I'm busy running my mouth. It's called Go for No. The subtitle being Yes is the Destination, No is How You Get There. So I shared with her that there are people who have reframed their thinking around the word no, around rejection, around failure. That is failure to get a yes, not failure as a, as a, as a person, not failure as a career, not failure as a life, but as failure, in achieve, failure to achieve a certain immediate goal. Go for no. There you go, Virginia. Um, so anyway, I had to call time out and say, there are such people who actually get up in the morning looking for and excited about opportunities to hear the word no, to opportunities to be told no as often as possible, as many times. Does that sound weird to you? What? You want to be told no? You want to get rejected? There are such people. And generally speaking, those are the people who succeed the most. I'm going to read something for you. So, and, and I'm just sticking on this because I'm, I'm, I'm using it in this context to illustrate this idea that it's always a that, that what we think is automatically true. Self-limiting beliefs. About no, here's the self, here's the, 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 the refutation, if you like, the contradiction, the hey, wait a minute, to the self-limiting belief of no one likes to be told no. No one likes to fail. No one likes to be rejected. You ever heard of Michael Jordan? One of the greatest basketball players who've ever lived, right? You know what he said once? Won multiple championships, most valuable player, so many points and honors, accolades. You know what he said? He said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. So, that is just one of the self-limiting beliefs that so many people carry around. Nobody likes to be told no. Oh yeah? Oh, I'm too old to learn anything new. Oh yeah? Well, let me tell you a story. Oh no, it's, it's, it's too late to start a new business. It's too late to do this new thing. I've already got the thing that I, that I really want. I don't need to think about anything else. Oh, yeah? Let me tell you a story. There was this lady, who, uh, young, young woman, who was in college, uh, 
And she was on vacation, summer vacation one year in a different city from the city where she was attending university. Met a young man, handsome, dashing, sophisticated young man who had just come back from serving in the war recently, not, not long before that, serving in the war overseas. Fell in love, they fell in love, got married, moved to the new city, got married, raised four kids, beautiful, four beautiful children. All the kids grew up strong and healthy, smart kids, went to college, university, doing very well. And when the last of those four kids had graduated from college, that young lady who dropped out of school to get married went back to college. Went back to college. Went to a local uh, a school near where, in the town where they were living there. Got a degree in psychology, bachelor's degree in psychology. Went on to graduate school. Graduated from a prestigious university with a master's degree in social work. On the day she crossed the stage and you know, did the tassel thing with the master's degree, on that day she was 50 years old. Went on to a successful career as a teacher, guidance counselor, and you know, retired and, and is now living the good life in, in, uh, back in her home state of all places. The, the story, has a, as, as you can see, has a really happy ending because she never, this lady, this young lady never took the word of somebody else's self-limiting belief. Oh, no, you can't go back to school. It's too late. You're too old for that sort of thing. Went back and did it, succeeded, went on to a very fulfilling career. That lady is my mother, Eleanor Henderson. So please, somebody, please try and tell me that you can't do something because you're too old and it's too late. I, I'm, I'm sorry, have, have you met my mama? <laughs> so, so here's the question for all of us. Here's the question. What is it that is holding you back from trying something new, from exploring some new knowledge, some new information? What is holding you back from taking the risk, from taking that next step into a larger world of knowingness, as our friend John likes to say, of achievement, of growth, of increase. What is it? That, oh, I'm too old. Oh, no, you know, I've already tried that. It didn't work. Those sorts of things. That, that kind of thing doesn't work for me. No, I, I'm, nah. You know, I'm, I'm good where I am. I'm okay where I am. And here's an exercise. It's just a minor thing, a couple of steps. Not minor, but simple. That's a better word. Simple, couple simple steps to examine our own self-limiting beliefs. The first step is to be aware of them. Oh, I'm too old. Nah, I, I couldn't do that. No, that, that's not for me. First step. Ask yourself a question. Let's ask ourselves a question. The question is, who told you that? An old mentor of mine used to say that to me all the time. Whatever, whenever one of these beliefs, whenever one of these conceptions comes up in our mind, who told you that? I asked someone that recently who, who dropped one of those Oh, no, no, I, I couldn't do that. Uh, I'm not good at that. Who told you that? 
And they had to stop and think, oh, oh, yeah, that was my mom years and years and years ago. Oh, it was my dad who said, yeah, no, you, no, don't do that. You, you're no good at that. You're no good at that. You'll just hurt yourself. You'll just, you'll just lose your money. You'll just, nah. Oh, it was my teacher said, people don't do that sort of thing. First step, who told you that? Second step, another question. What if I could? What if I could? What if that story I've been telling myself based on what somebody told me 30 years ago, what if that story I've been telling myself isn't actually reality? What if it's just a story in my own head? What if I actually tried it? What's the worst that can happen? Oh, I'll lose some money. Oh, okay, well, I can go make some more money somewhere else or doing something else. Or I can learn from the setback, learn from the no, learn from the failure, refine my technique, learn what works. As a buddy of mine likes to say, repeat what works, delete what doesn't, and eventually get good at it and succeed. Persist and succeed. What if I could do that? What if it works? What if I can realize my goal, realize my dream, rather, rather than simply continuing to tell myself that I can't? What if I could? And then the third step, as we talked about, I think, last week, what am I waiting for? Go for it. Why not? You know, that was, one of the, that was one of the thoughts that came to my mind when I was presented with this, a new thing, a new way of thinking, a new way of looking at things, a new thing to try. Why not? What I got to lose? <laughs> right? So I invest, I invest some time. I invest a little money. I put my heart and soul into trying the new, into doing the new thing. You know what? I learned a long time ago. I had forgotten, but I learned a long time ago that you and I are capable of just about anything we set our minds to. If we quit telling ourselves all of those BS stories that we've heard for years and years and years. Our family, our old teachers, our old religious leaders, our old friends, our current friends, our current family, well-meaning as they may be, there's something they don't know about you. The something they don't know about you is that you were born and gifted with limitless capabilities. How do I know this? Michael Jordan. <laughs> and so many other examples that all of us could call up. One, some closer to home. How do I know this? Shannon Lavenia. Look at someone you admire. Study their life. One thing you'll find is that it, virtually all of them had to overcome, among other things, the ignorance, the lack of support, the well-meaning but self-limiting beliefs foisted upon them by friends and family. And as I like to say, I saw this, not original with me, so I can't take credit. As I like to say now, 
I used to worry what other people thought of me, including me, including what I used to think of me. I used to worry about what other people thought of me <laughs> until one day I tried to pay my bills with their opinions. <laughs> so, be aware of the self-limiting belief, that story, that, that, that saying that, that keeps repeating over and over in our head. Who told you that? What if it's not true? What if I actually could? What if I actually can make this happen? And number three, what am I waiting for? What have I got to lose? What do you think? I've seen a couple of comments and, uh, uh, in, in the chat here. Every no, Gail, quite right. Every no, Bings is closer to yes. And Virginia, you guessed it right. Yep. The story is my mom. Well, look at you, Virginia, nurse in school, and not even 55 yet. How about that? <laughs> and there's excellent, excellent story. So I, I know that every one of us, yeah, you know, myself included, I struggle with all the stuff that I point a finger at somebody else. Fingers pointing back at me. Uh, I have struggled and continue to struggle with confronting, addressing, and releasing self-limiting beliefs. It's easier now than it used to be, but they're still there. What about you? You know anybody? You know anybody's walking around, maybe walking around with a story inside their head that somebody told them something about themselves that they weren't capable in some way? How are they dealing with it? Do you know? What do you think? I know that once upon a time, someone very close to me, you, you're going you're gonna to laugh. You're going to laugh. Someone very close to me once said, no, come on, Glenn, give up that, give up that entrepreneur stuff. Give up that home business. You're, you're, just, you're just not cut out for that sort of thing. You're not a business guy. Just go get a regular job like everybody else. You'll be much happier. You won't be as frustrated. Just go get a regular job. I mean, after all, you, you don't have what it takes to run a business anyway. Hilarious, right? You know what's funny? For a long time, I actually believed that. And it held me, it was part of what held me back from achieving the results that I was truly capable of. So what's, what's holding you back, Clarius? What's, what self-limiting beliefs, what story are you possibly continuing to tell yourself based on something that somebody told you way, way back before, before you decided to be start believing it yourself? There's something there. Um, that was one of them for me. Eh, you don't have what it takes to run a business anyway. Just give up this, this entrepreneur stuff. You don't have what it takes. Um, another one was actually one I was telling myself. I told myself for years. You're going to laugh. Here's another one you're going to laugh. I told myself. I don't know where this one came from. I told myself for years that I was not capable of writing a book. <laughs> That's a good one. I believed it. I absolutely believed it, too. And thank goodness I was wrong. <laughs> so what else? Everybody's got one. Everybody's got something in here. And most of the time, the reason why we don't so often don't overcome 
those self-limiting beliefs is because for whatever reason we're afraid to confront them. We're afraid to address them honestly, fearlessly, ruthlessly because they've become, ooh, now we're about to get deep for a second, because they've become part of our personality, part of who we are, or more accurately, part of who we believe ourselves to be. You ever heard somebody say, well, it's, you know, you can make little adjustments here and there, you can change it, but you can't really change your basic personality. You know, you're born with it, and that's it. And, you know, personality, you know, so you work with what you've got. And I'm going to censor myself now so that John doesn't have to go back and ed edit this video. Horse hockey. <laughs> I have seen people who were one type of person, who were this person. I've known people who it was this person when I met them. Years later, they're this person. Why? How does, that, how does something like that happen? Well, for one thing, they quit telling themselves the story that they had been told their entire life about who they were supposed to be or about who other people expected them to be. So who are you? What's your personality? Guess what? You get to decide. You get to choose. Gail, what's on your mind, my friend? I just want to um, tell a little story about my oldest daughter. She was in high school. She's always been very driven to be the best of the best and everything. Hmm. And it came to her final year in high school and she wanted to be in the top 10 students mm. and the school told her she would not be able to do it she should not even try and she tried and she did her best instead of the top 10 she was 11 and she was so disappointed in herself Hmm. Because she didn't make that top 10. And she wanted to prove to them that no matter what they said, she could do it. And um, we just had to support her and tell her, look, it's amazing what you've done anyway. You know, being number 11, that's that much away from being, you know, for, you, for your goal. And um, where she got that drive from and that, I don't know. She just was amazing. And I'm so proud of her for what she did and where she is today. Today, she's an associate director of uh, special education for six elementary schools in a charter school system. And um, mm -hmm. she's done amazing. She really has. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's just one of uh, things where I... I don't even know why would the school tell her that she couldn't do it. They they almost didn't want her to do the work. You know, it, it's crazy. Huh. You know, the, and when people tell you, "Oh, you can't do that," um, I think it's sad. That is well. First of all, congratulations to your daughter. Holy moly! Yeah. What a change and what a successful. <laughs> career position she's in right now and thumb to the nose of those knuckleheads yes. in that school who told her I think part of it Gail and you tell me what you think um, because maybe you've had conversations with those school administrators it seems to me that a lot of times in fact many many times those on the sidelines who are looking and watching someone else striving to succeed, striving for success, for growth, for increase. Those on the sidelines are in a way threatened by the person 
striving to achieve because I've heard this so many times, your success acts as a mirror to the unsuccessful Mm -hmm. and reflects back upon them their own failures and their own shortcomings. And nobody likes to be reminded of their own shortcomings. Mm -hmm. So they attack and they try to hold back and put down the person who is striving for more in life so that that person's success won't serve, won't be there to serve as a contrast to my own failure, to my own mediocrity. You know, that may be one of my least favorite words in the English language, mediocre, mediocrity. Ew. So I think, I think that perhaps your daughter may have been attacked with ulterior motives by a cadre of the mediocre. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, kudos to her. Well done. That is fabulous. And you know, we I think we one of the one of the reasons to read biographies particularly biographies of highly successful people, people who've achieved a dream, people who've transcended their circumstances in some way and achieved a greater goal. Part of the reason for following the life stories of such people is so that we can constantly remind ourselves that who people tell us we are is not who we are. And to remind ourselves that our past is not our future and to remind ourselves that where we are today you know they say on the you ever seen those commercials or heard those commercials on the radio for investment firms and the that kind of thing and they always say past performance is not indicative of future results well absolutely true In the case of every one of us, past performance is not indicative of future results. Your past is not your future. I actually heard Mr. Spock say that one time. Yeah, you knew it. You knew the Star Trek reference was coming, didn't you? (laughs) Your past is not your future. What people say about you, what people have said about you, including you, is not who you are. You get to decide who you are. Well, on that note, I am going to share, again, give us back, share the schedule again, uh, Hospitality Suite right after this, and then 6 p.m. Eastern time this evening. We said it before, Life and Business Tools, hosted and shared with us by pretty much the smartest man in the room, Professor Adrian Garner. And uh, thank you all so much for spending a few minutes with us today. Remember, remember, remember. Who they tell you you are is not who you are. You get to decide what your future will be. So make it a fantastic day. I've got to go jump on another Zoom call. You believe this? It's going to be, it's, 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 it's already a pretty busy day. Make it a fantastic day. You absolutely deserve it. Take care, my friends. Have a good one. Bye for now. Bye-bye.